Hello everybody and welcome to another top 10 edition of Magic Mike's, proudly sponsored by our Patreon supporters and CoolStuffInc.com where you can find cool stuff in stock every day and our co-sponsor CardHoarder.com offering the best inventory prices and delivery of cards for Magic Online. I'm Evan Urban and we start by introducing my two co-hosts Aaron Campbell. We're back! Ruben Bressler. Greetings! We're a little late for the treats episode but it's in between Halloween and Thanksgiving so I think we're okay I mean, for me personally, the time between Halloween and Thanksgiving, any any sort of diet or any semblance of eating well for that, it's just like a grace yeah. period. You just don't even bother. Just, right. Whatever. It's just, yeah, yeah we're, we're a few weeks late. It's fine. This it's is awkward. where we gorge our cheeks and hide nuts for the winter. <laughs> so we make our New Year's resolution. For the winter? <laughs> I'm in Florida. We don't even know what that is. Right. I'm in California. Apparently what our seasons are are rain and fire. Mm. yeah yeah that's pretty much but you're okay is. though because you, you, okay. you did a picture yeah. of the map and like it's coming I for you a picture of the map yeah the, so the fires are about 15 to 20 miles uh west of where i am and that's not very far winds, those are uh, not headed in our direction it did smell a little bit mesquite yesterday out in the backyard here but uh but we are we are safe presently where we are in the valley um but yeah there's been a lot of fire damage down here nowhere near as bad as the campfire that's up in the uh in northern california mm. that is that is some bananas bananas stuff it's like uh, something out of a disaster movie like someone had tweeted a picture of i think they were on the freeway and they were showing like it coming from behind a cliff and it literally looked like that scene in independence day where the ship is cutting through the clouds like just the yeah. rolling i was like this can't this i'd watch real I'd and it's a real a phone of, uh i watched a couple of local news anchors who were like on the scene and talking to the people who were in the studio and the people in the studio are trying to ask questions and the people on the scene are just dumbfounded they're just there's no, there are no words mm. because it's like nothing they've ever seen but like they've seen fires there's nothing like this yeah oh my god well um, stay safe buddy because yeah. mm -hmm. that's yeah insanity. as soon as if, if the winds change and anything happens we are we're gone i got a go bag we got a bug out bug out bag if just in case wow but uh but for now we're good we're, all right we're okay well for now we're gonna talk about silly magic cards because that's what we do here well, we also begin with our choice of the top comment from last week in a segment we call Honorable Mention, where Ruben will tell us who was the most luxuriant in letting us know what card we didn't choose as one of our top 10 combat tricks. Ruben? Well, I have a bit of a weakness for cards that qualify for Honorable Mention that are segment names in our show, which mm. is why I chose this one. Uh, it, it's also a good argument. But now that I've told that, I think this is the last time that I'm no, no gather the towns, folks, everybody. Uh, but Fred Perez on YouTube writes, nothing feels better than swinging with your one ones and two twos, having the opponent block with everything they have and sometimes not blocking at all, thinking it's just four damage and then just punishing them with trumpet blast. Nice. End games or even turn a game around by acting as a pseudo board wipe. There are always versions of this card printed and it feels good playing every single one of them. Well, it feels good to uh, call their bluff a little bit. Like I remember uh, something kind of similar happened to me in the Eternal Weekend. Uh, I was playing a young man who was on Miracles and he had uh, a mentor and a token. And I could have blocked, but I didn't necessarily want to lose my bridges because I knew if I, I could you know, swing back, I'd be okay. And he had like two cards in hand. And I looked at my life and I looked at him and I was like, no blocks, show me your mentor triggers or show me your prowess triggers. And he was like, I don't have any and I took my three and then I we untapped and I killed them and so it's great to have that sort of kind of feels like in the wild west when there's the yeah. showdown of like the down down oh, staring, down. staring at each other and it's like oh you're bluff <laughs> <laughs> yeah well here's the thing about trumpet blast uh so trumpet blast if you don't know is a red and two generic mana for an instance a common currently from m19 attacking creatures get plus two plus zero into end of turn note attacking not blocking yeah, right. not <laughs> creatures you control Yep. attacking only so i have in my life at one point cast it and gave my opponent the trigger oh, the sure. oh no because i thought it was like you know your creatures like attacking or blocking creatures or something <laughs> right. whatever the point is i thought it was just me and it was like and no 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 it was like fortify mm -hmm. or you know oh. one of the other many cards that are like creatures you control get something mm -hmm. Yeah, and I got blown out. It was really sad. Well, let me tell you, uh, Mr. Fred Perez from YouTube, hit us up on what? Message the sub the moderators on the subreddit. Yeah, Always seems to be a way to get a hold of us. We'll get you your fifty dollars gift certificate to CoolStuffInc.com. Thank you very much, CoolStuff, for providing that. 
can't contact us via smoke signals this time because there's too much smoke around. <laughs> Ruben's got enough of those smoke signals. You know what I'm saying? All right. So we're talking about the treats. We we're, we're trying to we're trying to you know say we have MTG tricks and we have MTG treats. We have food in magic cards. This is where yeah. there's food. Food's talked about. Food's in the name. It's food oriented this week. Uh, yeah. and, and I have, we have a surprising number. Well, we have, we have a surprising sort of makeup of the hires and saints. We'll talk about it as we go along, but uh, go over here to, uh, number 10, Ruben, kick us off with your number 10 MTG treat. I just want everyone to have the full impact of all of the arts. So I'm just going to name the cards first. So we get the arts up on the screen immediately. Okay. My number 10 is magistrate's veto. Mm. Magistrate's veto is an uncommon from Mercadian masks. It's two colorless and a red enchantment. White creatures and blue creatures can't block. It's a heck of a card for, you know, limited. It didn't really see much play, but that art, that art is so hilarious. Look at that delicious turkey. Mm -hmm. There's some sort of cast iron skillet on the table. There appears to be so much stuff uh, uh, that this large gentleman on the left appears to be having for dinner. And then, of course, Squee, the goblin nabob, uh, not having any of it. I think that's Squee. Maybe it's just a generic goblin. I mean, I'm not um, sure, but this guy certainly, this is, you know, sort of leaning into the, you know. He's got a bucket of fried chicken right there. Look at that. Yeah. The, the chubby and happy. That's how they work, and they're in charge. Well, sort of the, you know, this is kind of a callback to what they call the fat cat politician. You know, somebody who's obviously, you know, thriving and not going hungry and, and possibly just having the ability to, you know, with a wave of the hand, you know, veto something. I just want to talk about just what this card does. You know, this is something we don't see anymore. You know, you don't really see color, color hate like this. This is calling out two specific colors of the color pie and saying you don't block. Um, and that's very rare. And we just will never see something like this ever again. It's also just, I mean, it's kind of, it's just so bad. Well, first of all, it's a Mercadian mask card. So you're already you're usually in bad territory. <laughs> that sets wow. just hot garbage fire. But <laughs> it's just so awkward. It's like, who is this for? Is this for your red deck to try to somehow beat the white blue deck that probably doesn't run creatures anyway, because this is a world of right. wrath of God and swords of plowshares? Right. If your opponent has a bunch of wall of glare and saprazin uh air and things like that then maybe this will see something but. this could see a lot of play if you if you're playing against a a, a merfolk edh deck you're gonna feel there really you know. happy that you have this card just saying versus pretty that good one against opponent. my arcades the strategist walls deck yep that's the tech because yeah. you know you sideboard in for the edh games right all right cool so aaron what's your number 10 so I, it's no secret, I don't cook very much. You know, I, I'm, I'm making little steps. I have myself what the kids call a Dutch oven, a little one pot recipe. So I'm getting a little better at it. Um, but I do eat out a lot. It is something I'm trying to work on. And one of the things that really intimidates me whenever I see these recipes are words I don't understand or too many steps. And so for example, if they're like, you need to sear something, I don't know what that means. Or they're like, simmer this. Well, I've Googled simmer. A simmer could really be anything. And then there's the word saute, which I'm still not 100% clear on. Um, but saute is my number 10. Nice. Um, so saute is an instant from unhinged. Um, it costs one and two red. It's an instant. It's a saute deals three and a half damage to target creature or player. And then the flavor text says selecting the proper beetle is the key to a good saute. The pinker the fur and the heartier the yelp, the more succulent the beetle will be when you pop it in your mouth. Uh, beetles have been a creature type in magic for a while. We famously have bouncing beetles uh, from Urza's legacy. Um, and so this is indicating that you can cook them and yep. eat them. And that's a little little macabre, but um, you know, for someone like me who's trying to cook, you know, I'm still a little intimidated by words like saute. And so I figured I would start it off with, uh, start my list off with a that I have a personal attachment to of, of saute. My shout God. out, shout out to my buddy John Johnson, who is the world's foremost collector of Beeble cards and arts and things like that, and I believe has the original art for this card. Oh wow! wow. Okay. I mean, shout out to uh, Asmora Nomardic uh, Diastinacle <laughs> oh, as, as yeah, as Underworld as Cookbook. Cookbook. <laughs> wow, that's that's a mouthful. That is a canon MTG character. Mm -hmm. yeah. Been on a few cards, as I understand it. Well, uh, this is a card for my number 10. I can't believe that it's not on any of body else's list. I honestly thought I was going to put this here because I know it's going to be higher on someone else's list. And that's okay because I want it on this list. It's too good not to be on the list. I mean, it's not every day a clown throws a pie at you. 
and it's called Just Desserts. And it's oh. literally a picture of a clown throwing a pie at you. You deal pie damage. That's what you do. That's how pie filled this card is. Just Desserts yep. is an uncommon, I'm sorry, is a common from Unstable. It's a red and generic mana for an instant. It deals pie damage, 3.14 damage to target creature. That's amazing. And it's time to put the die and die amateur, says Flaky <laughs> the Irrational. I love, love it. it. This is fantastic. I love it. Yeah, yeah, this is definitely a, a win. Uh, this was, you know, Unstable was a really big hit. I can't believe, you know, we're coming out a year. Unstable came out almost a year ago. Like, where is this year gone? But yeah, this was a card that I definitely, you know, I'm not normally a burn player, but I will absolutely use a Just Desserts. Oh, yeah. man, Just Desserts is sweet. I mean, I think that you can, let me, I, I, I'm not a math scientist, but I think that if you cast uh, oh God. six Just Desserts, that's 19 damage. Is that right? If you do one again? You cast six Just Desserts six times. I think it's like 18.9 damage now that I think about it. Oh my I gosh. do think it's funny though, the reminder text, uh, it says pi is the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. It's a smidgen more than three. I never thought I would see the word smidgen on a magic card. Uh, 3.14 six times is 18.84. Darn. So yeah, 3.14. So seven times, if you cast it seven times, you can deal 21.98 20, damage. 22 damage. 22 damage, 21.98. Nice. There so you if go. your opponent gains two life and you cast seven of them, it's strictly better than Incinerate. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Great. I mean, it is strictly better because it literally deals more damage. Right. All right. Moving on here to number nine. Aaron, what's your number nine? So I'm going to dedicate my number nine to somebody very special. Uh, my friend Alexis is the most Wisconsin girl that I know. When she got married, she was registered at the Cheese Castle. Um, she lives in Florida now, but she lived in Maryland before. And when she comes home to visit her family in Wisconsin, she literally has issues with the TSA because of how much cheese she tries to smuggle home. Like she, she's just most dyed in the wool. She loves her Packers. She loves her beer and she loves her cheese. Um, but I have to dedicate this card to her because whenever I see this card, I think of her and me being a Wisconsin girl, I love myself some cheese. Uh, so my number nine is going to be the cheese stands alone. Nice. Um, so the cheese stands alone is four colorless and two white. It's an enchantment. It says if you control no cards in play, other than the cheese stands alone and have no cards in your hand, you win the game. Uh, flavor text, of course, just seals the deal. The meat, on the other hand, has frequent visitors. <laughs> girl, girl. Hey. Um, this is just a really neat sort of alternate win condition. You know, we have cards like Near Death Experience. You know, you have Lab Maniac. And who doesn't love, you know, a way to win the game that's not the conventional, you know, get someone to zero life or sort of mill someone out. You know, I love, you know, a weird way to win the game. And if you can ever make this work, I don't know if anybody ever has, but... Um, this is a card where I would completely be willing to try. This is a card that is used often in the quizzes, you know what I mean? Like the puzzles and stuff. Mm -hmm. How do yeah. you actually get the cheese stand alone to happen? It inspired near-death experience, which made it even easier to do at yeah. a lesser mana cost. And you only have to be at one life and have this and you're fine. Um, well, there's also Baron Glory as well, which yes. I think is just the exact reprint. Yeah, I think is that's, uh, let's see, Baron Glory is uh, six mana. The cheese stands alone with six mana. Uh, if you control no other permanents other than Baron Glory and you have no cards in hand, you win the game. It is literally yeah. a reprint. It's the same card. Functional reprint. Very nice. Of silver into black border. And that's how uh, Rosewater does it. He's just kind of very nice. maneuvers through the silver waters to get to the black border ones. Hashtag Ru please don't take my cheese. Nice. She was literally, <laughs> the TSA was threatening to take her cheese. And she's like, please don't take my cheese. It looks please like plastic it. explosive when it goes. <laughs> the, wow. The thing. Some dangerous Velveeta. Ruben, what's your number nine? Out there, there are spirits, but here, there is wine. My number nine is Blessed Wine. Yes. Mm. Uh, this is, I think, my favorite Kaja Foglio art. Um, it's just so, like, calming and peaceful, and it's a, a really unique piece of art. And boy, does that look like a nice glass of wine that I would like to have, uh, with a beautiful stained glass in the background, a, a really content-looking half-elf here in the foreground drinking that wine. Um, you know, food based, but certainly a treat if you have the right kind of red wine. Yeah. Red, red wine. Did we actually say what everybody, it did? Everybody knows that I'm a, a mono red wine aficionado. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's one of the, the cantrip from the cycle and ice age. It's a white and generic mana instant. You gain life. You draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. Drawing a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep was like this weird thing that they yeah. had for years. And it sucked all, every time, every time it sucked. And it's a slow trip. Yeah, it was because there was always some percentage of the time where so much would happen. You just forget, you know, yeah. you'd be like, oh, I, I was supposed to draw for that. You know, two turns ago. It's like, well, too late. Screwed it up. Ooh. Although uh, the slow trip card portent, 
which mm-hmm. of course later uh, inspired Ponder, Portent became popular because of Miracle. You I still think it's the saddest thing I've ever seen. Like whenever I see a Miracles player play Portent, I'm always just like, yeah. girl, like, it's, what it's is your life idea. right now? <laughs> well, for the first it time- to this. For the first time since 5th edition and or, if you'd like to call, think of them as the Cold Snap theme decks, uh, Portent was just reprinted in Commander 2018. Wow. With new art. Bless their heart. I did not know that. That's really neat. All right. Well, Blessed Wine is super cool, but me, I'm going to take it old school. I'm going to take it super duper old school. Now, this is a card that has been printed a whole bunch and doesn't always feature food or food-like objects, but back in the day, back in the back back day, back in the alpha days. The Dizzy. The, di- the diggity days the di- <laughs> but i was i don't know 13 or whatever uh there was a card that looked like food and inside it basically had like a dragon but it was glass and it was cool and it was called lure L- oh. lure is a two green a generic mana for an enchantment aura enchant creature and all creatures able to block enchanted creature do so and for the very longest time there was like an apple involved in the yeah. the artwork for this card even the mercadia yeah. mask someone offering i think it was mercadia masks yeah uh, offering like an apple in her hand because that's what's going to lure you to her very neat yeah the the original art the original uh the alpha art of the apple but also with the skull mm-hmm. was uh i mean it looks appetizing but then it also clues you into exactly what's happening fair enough so uh that card is sweet all right moving here to number eight ruben what's your number eight uh jason chan is responsible for a lot of iconic magic the gathering art he's responsible for omniscience he's responsible for a johnny vengeant the new dual deck counter spell not to mention chase the mind sculptor which is better than all and many many more but one that you might not think of off the top of your head but is number eight on my list here for the treats is bountiful harvest a card so bad that it was my last pick i think every time i ever drafted m10 Oh, wow. uh, and then it was reprinted a couple other times. Bountiful Harvest is four colorless and a green sorcery. You gain one life for each land you control. Not ideal. Five mana sorcery to gain probably five life. Not the best thing I've ever seen in my life. But that fruit in the foreground looks sure does look delicious. Looks like I want to pick that and have that for a snack. So that'll that'll take my uh, my number eight slot. It's just so bad. <laughs> it's just so bad. The flavor text is lovely, though. It says, when we fail to see the beauty in every tree, tree, we are no better than humans. And that's from an elvish scout. And so that's yeah. that's lovely. Yeah, that's cool. I don't know. This is one of those, like, they rebooted magic or whatever with M- M10. And, then you know, we're back to high fantasy. And it's like, where the, here's this tree branch. And you gain some life off your lands. You're like, what? And we're going to reprint it twice. We're going to keep this train rolling. Take it out of 2011. We're going to go back in 2012 and 2013. Because oh. you need you a bountiful harvest in your world. Aaron, what's number eight? My number eight is the only higher on my list. Very nice. Well, I have one of those coming up, but not right now. My number eight is awesome. uh, And I don't believe it's going to be the first or last, or it's definitely the first, but I don't think it's going to be the last silver bordered card. Obviously we're going to talk about, and not just silver bordered, but holiday themed, because this is stalking tiger, which has delicious chocolate chip cookies right in front and center. Holiday. Mm -hmm. Stalking Tiger is five generic mana. It uh, it is a holiday promo for, I can't remember what year was this, 2013. Uh, Five generic mana for a 3-3 artifact creature cat construct when it enters the battlefield. uh, It enters the battlefield with a sealed magic booster pack under it. And when Stalking Tiger deals combat damage to a player, unwrap the booster pack and put it into your hand. My friend Adrian, uh, ethnographer to Magic, famously has a stalking tiger. She had a friend who who made one for her. And whenever you see Adrian at events, uh, you can usually identify her because she's a stalking tiger sitting on her so- her shoulder. And I believe Therese Nielsen did the art for it. And so Therese, yeah. uh, you know, has endorsed it and thinks it's awesome. And so whenever I look at stalking tiger, I just immediately think of my friend Adrian. That's awesome. Yeah, definitely. The uh, the cookies laid out for Santa waiting, uh, and also this cat to kill him. <laughs> So that's how that works. All right, let's move on here to number seven. Aaron, do you have a number seven? I do, and we're going to keep sort of the the holiday cards going. Now, I am not a gruel player at all. Like, I don't really know anything about that life. I've never cast a Blood Rush. I don't really know. I might have resurrected a Rorik Thar a time or two, but you wouldn't really think of me and think of gruel. But this is a card that I can get behind because this is deliciously 
See what I did there? Mm -hmm. uh, deliciously creepy uh, for being a gruel card. Uh, my number seven is Yule Ooze. Um, so Yule Ooze is a holiday 2011 card. It is two colorless, a red and a green. It's a creature type ooze. It's a one, one. At the beginning of your upkeep, destroy another non-land permanent chosen at random. Then put a number of plus one, plus one counters on Yule Ooze equal to that permanence converted mana cost. You can pay one red and a green, eat some food and regenerate Yule Ooze. And the best part, the flavor text, it loves having family for dinner. Get you get it? Like ah, you, let's then, go eat the family. Like, and then you'll lose, like you'll lose, right? This is that. <laughs> this card just hits so many notes for me. And you just sort of see this kind of jello mold going rampant on the table here. And I was just going through the list of cards and I just kept finding, like just when I thought I loved it enough, something else would come up of like the name of the pun, the flavor text, eat some food. And this card just is a home run, and this is delightful. <laughs> It also harkens back to re to regenerate. Yeah, I mean, Steve Prescott. Well, I mean, well re re regenerate the um the actual mechanic itself is just not something we really see anymore because they've moved away from it. Things get indestructible these days. Regenerate was always weird to explain, and they loved it for a long, long time. Eat some food. Doesn't Eat matter. Some. Just grab a Kit Kat. Grab a grab a bun. Just grab something. Just do what <laughs> you gotta do. It reminds me of the gelatinous cube from Dungeons and Dragons with the pale green and all the stuff floating inside. I also yeah. love the worried look on the face of the pig. Well, speaking of just like chomping down on whatever happens to be nearby, sometimes you got to take the book that you got nearby and it's just, it's delicious. And you got to put library paste on it too, because Orcish Librarian showed yep. us how it was done. Orcish Librarian is a rare from Ice Age. It's a red and generic man. It was later reprinted as a time shifted rare in time spiral. It's a red and generic mana for a 1-1 orc has red tap colon look at the top eight cards of your library remove four of them at random from the game and put the rest on top of your library in any order so if there were decks that were trying to you know essentially get cards out of their library for some reason you're running a weird eater of days deck i don't know this card never really made sense but i thought it was hilarious that he's chowing down on a book it's yeah. not just not just our food it's fantasy food like books I think, I think that he's eating the joy of cooking and has the naked lunch in the background as well. Wow. It's just adorable. And see, that's one of those things where like we're referencing the real world, right? Like that would never, yeah. ever happen these days. I think that was really interesting. Yeah. So, all right, Ruben, what's number seven? So my number seven um, is another delicious smorgasbord, uh, but delicious if you're a certain type of person. And that type of person is if you're a dragon. Because I'm not sure I want to be eating this giant platter of antlers and a pig's head and an actual hoof. But there's a couple of nice, nice lean pieces. It's really nice when the mutton is nice and lean. <laughs> the mutton. The mutton. <laughs> the mutton is nice and lean. Uh, my number seven is Dragon Lord's Servant. Ooh. Colorless and a red goblin shaman. Uh, most recently from Iconic Masters, but originally from Dragons of Tarkir. Dragon spells cost you one less to cast. And it's a little Tarkir goblin, so it looks like a tiny abominable snowman with this giant platter of just meat parts, uh, including a nice ham hock and a, and a horse head, maybe? Right. It's like a buffalo head there, too. There's some hair there. You know, that's always yep. great. Yep. yep. So if I were a dragon, this would look delicious. Yeah. This reminds me a lot of Dutiful Attendant, which someone else may have on their list, but uh, it basically says the dragon who eats the last head in the basket is entitled to the servants. And it's basically this human that has a basket head, this long cylindrical basket full of heads. And yep. the dragon just, whoop, just takes the head and walks away. And you just have the poor bastard who's like, don't eat the last one. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Oh my god, that is messed up. I just haven't yeah. paid a lot of attention to that card. <laughs> Gross. All right, that's that's freaky. I like it. All right. Let's see here. Let's move on here to number six. This is my one and only hire. So we won't have a number six for me. Ruben, watch number six. My number six, again, needs a specific audience, but you put the feast in front of a bunch of goblins and you get yourself a foot bottom feast. There's quite a lot of <laughs> options here. Uh, we got we've got what looks like little little uh, larvae there in the foreground. We got some sweet potato cubes. Um, there's a skull bowl with something smoldering in it, which might be like chicken legs. So there's some kebabs there. 
We got some uh, some shrimp cocktail out of a boot in the background. Out of a boot. <laughs> mm. And I'll, I'll look at these goblins coming in with their forks. They're ready to go. And so <sighs> this, this is uh, definitely an excellent, excellent feast. That's gross. Yeah, a little bit. I actually, I contemplated having, that was one of my early picks for this list, and I just couldn't stomach it, no pun intended. But yeah, well. Clearly the goblins can. Yeah, was, and I, I also couldn't say the name with a straight face. <laughs> it's not the foot top feast now, is it? <laughs> it's true. It's actually a pretty good card in Lorewood Limited. I mean, after you, you know, the it goblins right. deck really wanted to trade a lot, and then you just put all the goblins that died back on top of your deck. Yeah, it was okay. I I always wanted it to be better than it was. You know what I mean? Yeah, agreed. One of those cards where you're just like, I was really expecting you to do more than this. Like, yeah. Ugh, I fine. was never super unhappy with it, though. Sure. All right. So, uh, Aaron, what is your choice for number six? Well, Evan, speaking of freaky, this card is edgy. Like, when you go back and you look at, you know, Unhinged and Unglued, and you really kind of see how far Wizards was willing to push the envelope. And there are a handful of cards where I cannot believe this made it to print. And this is one of them. Um, this <laughs> just, I can't, I can't. And it just delivers like dominoes in, in so many ways. Uh, my number six is fat ass. <laughs> Because who doesn't love that? So my number six is fat ass. It's from Unhinged. It's four colorless and a green. It's a donkey shaman. Uh, power and toughness, two power, three and a half toughness. And it says fat ass gets plus two, plus two, and has a trample as long as you're eating. And the reminder text says food is in your mouth and you're chewing, licking, sucking, or swallowing it. The oracle text then elaborates and says fat ass. So the oracle text says fat ass gets plus two, plus two, and has trample as long as you're eating. Gum isn't food. We checked. <laughs> And then the flavor text says, our lawyers say no matter how funny it would be, we cannot encourage players to eat the cards. Do you hear that? Whatever you do, don't eat the delicious cards. Jeremy Jarvis did the art. You see this thick donkey, like, yeah. show it off its ass in the art, like, pulling down. Like, I cannot believe this card happened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they went a little weird with Unhinged. Um, yeah. they, they leaned into the, the edginess in the second of the three unsets. Um, and it, there are some interesting things happening in this art, though. I mean, <laughs> it's a confident happens. donkey who loves their curves. I support this entirely. It's yeah. just the, the whole set was like butts are funny, and you're like, yeah. you're like butts. You're like stuff comes yeah. out of butts, and let's look at butts. And butts are on top <laughs> of buildings, and butt, 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 butt. And trust me, for like my six year old, that's hilarious. That is yeah. the height of comedy. And uh, yeah, for the rest of us, you're just like really sucking on food. You sucking on a lot of food these days. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Weird. That didn't get really obvious and freaky. Okay. Yeah. Number I mean, six. it does look like a delicious rack of ribs and a delicious turkey leg and some good baguettes. It's time to chow on those delicious, <laughs> delicious cards. <laughs> well, look, never would I ever imagine that across any top 10 list that we may do, would the feast, AKA the food and magic be the one that I have the exact same number five with. Who else shares a number five? That's going to be me, buddy. That's you and I, because this is one of those where I wanted it in there. I definitely wanted it. I felt like the, the food in this card is one of the things that people usually touch on when they talk about this card yeah. beyond anything other than sort of base stats or whatever, because right. it makes it interesting and it makes it unique. Ruben, what's our number five? Uh, unfortunately, the ultimate box topper and ultimate masters version of this card has removed the food from oh. the new art. And so we no longer get the bananas that we need for scale on Tassiger the Golden Fang. Oof. Mm -hmm. So Tassiger is five colorless and a black for a four five, but it is a legendary creature human shaman and it has Dell, so it almost never costs that much. Two colorless and then uh, Simic hybrid mana, Simic hybrid mana. Put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard, then return a non-land card of an opponent's choice from your graveyard to your hand. Yeah, a uh, card is good enough to be, obviously it's a modern staple. Legacy sees it in either Grixis Delva or the Death Shadow decks. Um, cards sees play in at least three formats, if, you know, big hit and standard. Um, this was a card that people immediately saw potential in right out of the gate. And, you know, I'm a little sad that the bananas are not included. You know, I'm not crazy about the art to begin with, but, you know, so much of what people think of when they think of Tassiger is the bananas that really just kind of jump out at you. And so the fact that it's not there uh, is definitely missed, I think. Yeah. I mean, hey, y'all. 
It's got nanners on it. <laughs> There's freaking nanners right there. B a n a n a s. That's right. You got your nanners on there, and uh, <laughs> you peel your nanners, and all of a sudden you got Tasker the Golden Nanner. All right, it's fan freaking tastic. What do you want from it? What was that song when we were little? It was like apples and bananas, and then like you go apples like and bananas. Eeples and Beninis. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Bring back the Beninis. I've never heard that. Eeples and Beninis. Opals and Bonobos. No, I've never heard that. They don't play that oh, stuff man. in the South. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go through all the vowel sounds. You go, I nope. like to at, 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 apples and bananas. Nope. Oh, 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 opals and Bonobos. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, you go through all the vowel sounds. No, yeah. man, I'm sorry. It's soft. We're wow. just talking about nanners, y'all. Hi. All right. Wow. Yeah. Okay. We got to. We got stuff to do, y'all. We got time for O's and O's <laughs> and audibles and weird songs about your vowels. Gotta fend off the Yankees. <laughs> we <Woo-woo. laughs> oh. Aaron, what's your number five? So my number five, Ruben kind of touched on, you know, wine as being something that's seen in magic cards. And and Ruben's was very, very comfy, very bougie, if you will. You know, it was like, you know, blessed wine. But, you know, sometimes, you know, you drink wine, you know, you could do like a nice red, but sometimes you just want to feel, rawr. you want like a, you know, you're seeing it nowadays with man wipes and man Kleenexes. And like, you can have a wine, you have a blessed wine, but you could also have my number five, which is a wine of blood and iron. Oh, yeah. sure. Um, so wine of blood and iron is three colorless. It's with Saviors at Kamigawa. Hey, Evan, I see you. Kamigawa. Whoop, whoop. Um, and it is an artifact. For four colorless, target creature gets plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is its power. And then you sacrifice Wine of Blood and Iron to end of turn. So this is a nice card for the people who, um, you know, if you sometimes, like, for example, my Moldrotha deck, you know, you can play an instant and give a creature plus X plus O. But you really want things that can be done. You want instant type effects on permanence so that when you're able to cast a permanent back in your graveyard, you're able to really right. lose that. So capsules excuse me, capsules, seals, uh, the fonts from Pharaohs. This is another one of those things that, as opposed to having a combat trick, if you're playing any sort of card that maybe wants Delirium, this is mm-hmm. Artifact for that as well. Um, and so this is a really neat way to get a combat-like trick without it being an instant or sorcery. And if you have any way to kind of recur permanence, you can have a lot of fun with a card like this. And I love sort of the flavor text, and I love the visual. You can literally kind of see the wine kind of going down his throat and see veins getting red and very inflamed. And um, this card just, just really motivates you. It seems like something you would drink before, you know, kind of going in the combat and just kind of rawr, and then I feel it. And he's freaky looking. My God, look at his face and his, <laughs> well, and his weird eyes. Magic yeah. down his throat as he pours it down his throat. You can see the veins getting the blood and iron uh, making it stronger. And like the weird uh, eyes up here and eyes down there and the lips and just and the teeth and uh, it's just it's a weird one. It's freaky yeah. and it's garbage because it's from Sabers <laughs> Kamigawa. Actual like. Bad trash in front of you this like that's here's what savers of Gama, kamigawa was like you read everything about this card and if you just left off the last sentence you'd be like that's eh, a fine magic card it's okay maybe even made it tap right four tap dark creature gets whatever who cares but no no, no. savers is like yeah you get it like once maybe twice and then it goes away you get your one time that's that's savers kamigawa just, ugh, sucker punch all right so that is your number five let's move on here to number four ruben what's number four well, my number four is embodied by its flavor text. The teamer believe three things only are needed in life. A hot fire, a full belly, and a strong companion. My next entry, my number four, is Feed the Clan. Mm. It's a colorless and a green instant. You gain five life or ferocious. You gain ten life instead if you control a creature with power four or greater. This card is... Uh, the bane of my existence as a burn player, um, <laughs> but it's also looks pretty delicious. I mean, they've got like a nice big carp on the Barbie. It looks like they've got some meat drying in the background. It looks like there's a party. Everybody's having a good time. Yeah, absolutely. This was this is all standard play. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. This this was a thing that could bring you back from the brink of death and against the the red decks. Yeah, if, yeah, you, if you wanted to gain five life instead of count playing Bountiful Harvest at sorcery speed for five, you can play this. For two mana, at yeah. the very least, and sometimes gain ten if you have a, a Tassiger or a or a uh, a Savage Knuckle Blade or something like that. Absolutely, I mean this was this was a force to be reckoned with for a long time, like until this rotated out. You know, burn decks were afraid of seeing this card in sideboards. 
Yeah, that was a format with Stoke the Flames. You know, the Jeskai burn deck was a thing where you had the Sarkhan, you had the Mantis Rider that would kill you very, very quickly. Uh, I believe some people even kind of tried it in Modern. I think some of the absent of the Jun decks putzed around with it, but it didn't really see a lot of play. But the ferocious part of it is surprisingly easy to get going, especially if you're playing with a Tarmogoyf or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Tarmogoyf, I mean, Siege Rhino in Standard was the, or Anafenza in Standard were the big ones uh, with yeah. the Clan. Absolutely. Aaron, what's number four? My number four is Relatable AF, as the kids say. Um, this is a fun card. I'm not really clear as to which one came first. Uh, there were two printings of it. Uh, one appeared to revolve around an ability, and then they got rid of the ability, and then it just kind of came the card. So you two can maybe clear that up for me. Uh, but my number four is Phosphorescent Feast. Mm. Um, so Phosphorescent Feast, I'm going to focus on the Future Sight version, uh, is two and three green. Uh, it's a sorcery. It says reveal any number of cards in your hand. You gain two life for each green mana symbol in those cards mana cost and the oracle text apparently this was also known as chroma mm -hmm. this was yeah. the i believe the first version of devotion or what would ultimately become devotion um kind of the same thing there and i, I picked this version in particular um, because of the flavor text it says mushroom queen sits among her spores enjoying life and avoiding chores i mean i play awesome. vulgari I and in my sink i mean iblion pixie diddy mm. yeah <laughs> Um, and then if you have the, um, there was also a version in Eventide, which actually had Chroma in the in the rule box. Um, and that flavor text says the boggards gorge themselves until their bellies glowed. Um, and so depending on what you're into, it's still a really sweet card, but just the idea of it being uh, a feast that, you know, creates a glow or helps you gain life, I think is really cool. Yeah, it's really neat. And this was a future site card. So it was future shifted. And then it was later printed Eventide. And there for like a hot minute, Wizards was okay taking cards that had essentially mechanics on them but didn't have mechanics on them and going back and adding those so yeah. it's so instead of opt is now scry one that's a thing but some they yep. didn't change so it's mm -hmm. it's more or less like sort of how they feel on a random tuesday as to whether or not a card's going to be sort of yeah a, a different card name or, or card wording yeah so all right so let's get here to my number four and my number four is super sweet because it is it's a holiday card holiday cards i'll be holiday. honest they're a little you know, it's a low bar. You know, man, it's usually very holiday. It's very friendly. It's very candy. It's very Christmas. But look, I, I'm totally okay with that because sometimes you have to have the Thopters bring the pie to you. I can't just throw the pie at you. It has to bring it to me. <laughs> there has to be an entire network of Thopters to take that pie and bring it to me. It is essentially the Amazon drone delivery in Magic with pie. Thopter Pie Network is yeah. a awesome, awesome rare. Uh, it's a holiday, happy holiday uh, card from 2016. It's two blue, two generic mana for an enchantment that says at the beginning of your upkeep, if you're eating, it's all about eating, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Create a 1-1 one, one colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying. Use food to represent the token. And whenever a creature token you control dies, if it's represented by food, eat it. Yes. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> this cake is your 1-1. One, one. <laughs> I bolt your cake. No, it's more eat like the if, cake. If you're using Listen. berries or if you're using Smarties or something like that. Sure. As long as someone's eating the cake. But so, look, right. if you if you're gonna go, right, you gotta you gotta game it, right? You gotta say, sure. look, I bought this cake from the store. There's your one one. Kill your one one, eat the cake. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Thopter Pie Network, of course, being a play on the Thopter Spy Network, uh, that also was in the Kaladesh block. Yeah. Um, it reminds me of my, now that I've mentioned blueberries, it reminds me of my favorite food related magic story that I'm not going to be able to tell anywhere else, which was, uh, there was a game of EDH happening at Origins Game Fair and, uh, in like the early 2000s and Eric Klug had just cast Goblin Game. Um, and he was like, Hey, does anyone have a lot of objects? And I had a box of blueberries that immediately landed in the middle of the table that I threw onto the table, which I thought was, I was very proud of. Wow. <laughs> MTG food stories, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> keeping it keeping it crazy. All right, let's move on here to number three, our top three MTG treats. Aaron, what's your number three? Uh, you know, I, I, you know, I mentioned earlier, you know, I'm, I've become kind of known as, you know, I, people, I love my zombies. I love my dead things and I have to pay homage to this. Um, this is a card that was standard legal. You know, we've certainly seen, uh, you know, duress in multiple formats, thoughtsies in multiple formats. You know, we've had, um, uh, a transgress the mind, you know, it, depending on the way the format shakes down, there's always going to sort of be a discard du jour. And this was the card that saw a lot of play in standard. Uh, this is something you would bring in if you had a very specific sort of like a disdain 
painful stroke, but for discard spells. Um, and just very creepy art. And the flavor text is really what seals the deal for me. Um, my number three is Appetite for Brains. Um, so Appetite for Brains is one black. It's a sorcery originally from Avacyn's Restored. It says target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a card from it with converted mana cost four or greater and exile that card. And the flavor text says, just as with a peach, the first bite is always the juiciest. And so you have this zombie literally holding this poor dude by the head and about to bite into his head. And it, it's just very, you can visualize it. You can visualize that that about to happen and them treating it like a peach. And it's just deliciously creepy. And then the mouth yeah. comes down and the crunching yeah. sounds and yeah. the squishy sounds yeah. because it's the juiciest. That's what the bite does. It <laughs> makes it juicy when you're eating brains. Got to keep it juicy, y'all. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, oh my God. That's that's a freaky card. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a card to scare the children. Yeah. That's the one. I'm like, come here, kids. Let me show you this <laughs> freaky guy with both teeth back on his head. Let's go to the Innistrad pre pre release. And they're just like, Daddy, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's all very sad. Ruben, what's your number three? My number three is a card that's been uh, had four different arts, but I would uh, turn your attention to the Portal Second Age version of Path of Peace. Hmm. Three colorless and a white sorcery from the first and second portals, as well as Starter 1999, later Urza's Saga, and of course Masters 25. But the Portal Second Age version... Destroy any one creature, that creature's owner gains four life. It's a fine removal spell and limited, but that's not the important part. This art is so evocative with the farmer tilling the fields in the background and the large bushels of corn and oranges and tomatoes in the foreground in beautiful baskets hang with the sword hanging by the front door. Yeah. Really evocative of making a, a creature that formerly was a fighter now a farmer, similar to Swords to Plowshares in terms of flavor. You could die famous or you can die old. I choose old. I think it also symbolizes, you know, you'd mentioned sort of the the former soldier who, you know, has kind of found it in calling in life. But I think the fact that the in, in God, we can even talk about this art for longer than the show. I think, you know, for me, it says that even though they have kind of moved on, they'll still protect their home. You know, they haven't gotten rid of these things. Oh, no, it's still out front. And yeah. even though I might be doing this plowing and this growing, I'll still cut you. And yeah. so I, I like that a lot. Very That's Game sweet. of Thronesy, And yeah. the art is really evocative as well. This is David A. Cherry, who has done such notable pieces as Veteran Explorer and Serrated Arrows as well. Mm. Uh, and he is a uh, Hugo-nominated artist artist as well as a Chesley Award winner, eight-time Chesley Award winner, uh, mo much more well known for lots of his other pieces in other games and in other works, um, but has his own mark on Magic the Gathering as well. I would say that he helped, in particular David A. Cherry, helped really define early Magic artwork. I think if yeah. you look through his art, uh, he did a lot of Mirage stuff. Hall of Gemstone was him, which was really nice. Uh, he did uh, the Black Carriage from Homelands, which was, again, while Homelands was a complete failure in a lot of ways, it was really cool. It had a really cool world. It was beautiful, yeah. yeah. Um, which was really neat. So, uh, But yeah, Path of Peace, uh, sometimes you got to have bushels of food, which are delicious. You stack them up and, and go, go, go till. <laughs> BRB. Tillin. <laughs> yeah. Is that the till you want to die on? Is that? Wow. Wow. Oh my goodness. Well, let me tell you. I mean, it could you. be worse. It's not like you took the red till or anything. Just, you know. Gosh. Wow. The till tricks. All right. So. Built a till. <laughs> so for my number three, I can't, I, I, I know, I know it's a low bar. I just love my holiday promos. They just make me so happy. In terms of like, what are my favorite food cards? The cards I'm like, hey, you know, hey, grandma, hey, mama, check out Food and Magic. I will show them what a fruitcake elemental looks like. <laughs> this giant fruitcake is going to crush your soul. And it's huge. And it's monstrous. It's too green and generic mana. It is the 2006 Happy Holidays promo. It's an elemental that is indestructible. It's a three mana 7-7. Seven, seven. For two green and generic mana, it's indestructible, and at the end of your turn, it deals seven damage to you. Oops. And for three mana, colon, target player gains control of fruitcake elemental, because nobody wants the fruitcake. That's the joke. Yeah, and the fact that it's indestructible, you know, you just, it really all ties into the fact that you can't get rid of it, even if you, and it doesn't seem to really go bad, you know, so you can have a fruitcake essentially forever, and it just turns into, it's indestructible, and this is such a great play on it, the fact that you can't give it away, the fact that it doesn't seem to age, 
the fact that it kind of punishes you, um, you know, the fact that it can kind of end games. It's a seven, seven. And this was actually my, this was my number eight. Nice. Um, and the minute I saw this, I just laughed out loud because it was just brilliant. And it's just so angry. Like you look at it. I think, and it's, <laughs> I think this is the very first one they ever did was the fruitcake yeah, element. It's brilliant. Um, and you just look at it and then you have the flavor text of experiments intended to create the perfect holiday emissary resulted in a substance harder than dark steel and a fraction um as, as mary. mary and i'm just like oh my god like, this is a win <laughs> it was a win. this is really it set off the holiday who promos off right yeah it really said this is they're going to be silly they're going to be whimsical they're going to do silly stuff you know we're going to make fun of the holiday tropes uh and i think they did a great job there so that yeah. was my number three moving on here to our number two ruben what's number two uh, my number two is a classic, not only in that it has seen play throughout its lifespan, um, it's been a super successful card. It's even an ultimate uh, box topper, uh, ultimate masters box top, box topper, uh, the second one on my list. It inspired uh, a play mat uh, later on um, from the Star City Games folks uh, and is uh, takes place where all the food comes from. My number two is Kitchen Finks. Nice. Mm. Kitchen Finks is a colorless and then a green-white hybrid, green-white hybrid, three total mana, creature type. Oof. It's a three-two. Oof. Finks enters the battlefield. You gain two life and it has persist. Um, you know, a couple of oofs uh, gorging themselves on whatever they can find in the kitchen, including bits of knife as the, as the, uh, the, the oof on the right appears to be taking some bites. Kitchen Links, of course, was the play mat that Andrea Raddick made later on as part of the Star City Games open series stuff. Uh, she now has done more Magic the Gathering art uh, as part of the Unstable expansion, doing stuff like Adorable Kitten mm -hmm. uh, and Half Squirrel, Half Whatever. Mm -hmm. um, lots of the uh, the Augment stuff from, from that set. But uh, Kitchen Finks, uh, just a classic Kev Walker art with the pots and pans and getting in trouble in the kitchen. Just, uh, just, just really iconic. Yeah, there are people who love nothing more in this world than to win with the Kitchen Finks with a plus one, plus one counter on it. They'll do it with Anna Fenza. They will do it with Birthing Pods. They'll do it with Malira. That's what they came to do. And, and God bless them. It's just a, it's a great card, like on rate. When Shadowmore was being spoiled and they showed Kitchen Finks, everyone was losing their minds. Like this was a terrific rate. It was a very powerful card. It really worked well against all of the aggressive decks, all the red decks. It worked well sort of in the mirror, of course, because you can bounce your Kitchen Finks off each other. Then, then later came all the crazy combos and putting the counters yeah. on them and stuff. At I first, it was just a great creature. Just by itself. Personally, I enjoy it with a death cloud where you're just like death cloud for five and then you're like whoop whoop and then you beat him down with some two one finks. <laughs> yeah, you death cloud and then you bring it back and you go, oh, and I gained two life. Thanks. Yeah. Clean living. Oh, it's just good, man. Yeah. And hadn't seen a reprint since Modern Masters, the very first Modern Masters until wow. this, this mm -hmm. year. So, uh, and you know, it's a six dollar uncommon because yeah, even exactly. if it, it's good both, you know, competitively, but it is just a fantastic casual card. This is a yeah. great card in your Celestia decks. Yeah. All right. So that moves on to Aaron. What's number two? My number two is a card that has been causing people uh, a lot of grief in, in modern for as long as I can remember. Um, you know, I think even uh, Reed Duke might have sleeved it up at Worlds, I think it was, versus Shahar Shenhar, if I remember correctly. Um, and, and this is a card that Maria Bartholdi from Good Luck High Five is a huge fan of. Um, and it's a very delicious card if you can catch it. My number two is Slippery Bogle. Um, Slippery Bogle is a hybrid blue and a green mana. It's a creature type beast, 1-1. One, one. Slippery Bogle can can't be the target of spells or abilities your opponent's control. And the flavor text says Bogles are very tasty. If you can get the skin off, it's getting a blade on them. That's the problem. And so this is the namesake behind the Bogles deck, uh, which you see uh, in modern. Uh, it's also Bogles is a thing in Popper as well. This is a commons. So you can obviously put it in there. You know, very, you know, harmless by itself, but you put on an ethereal armor, a couple umbras, and you have yourself a really good time. And so this card has frustrated a lot of people because you can't kill it. it, it the conventional ways that you would kill it don't really apply to this. And so um, it's good enough to name a deck after and it's good enough to eat if you can catch it. Well, you yeah. got to put it in the pot and then you just you slowly turn the heat up over time <laughs> so it doesn't realize oh. that's that's how that works. It's very Yikes. foggy that way. I'm sure. I'm very excited that they put Bogles in uh, in uh, Shadowmoor and Eventide because the Boggle is such an iconic old school Dungeons and Dragons monster uh, that this evokes um, with a very similar flavor to it, Bog uh, Boggles can either be slippery or sticky. You choose which one. Um, and yeah, they're just a ton of fun. All right. So let's move on here to my number two, Numero Dos. 
This one was one of the first cards I thought about when I was building the list. This is one of the easily, the, the funnest cards in M15. Like, this is one of those, I, I enjoy when Wizards kind of embraces some whimsy. You know, sometimes it's just kind of a little silly. Yeah, you know, we're killing, there's arrows and swords and blades and magic and stuff and whatever, but sometimes you just got to eat. Sometimes you just got to get the food to the battlefield. Sometimes you got to say, you got hot soup. You got a lot of hot <laughs> yes. soup out of the way holding hot soup y'all hot soups my number two it's an uncommon from m15 is one generic mana for an artifact equipment equipped creature can't be blocked because who stops the person with a suit it's ridiculous <laughs> whatever equipped creature is dealt damage destroy it because they drop the soup and that's yes, hot and it was that's hot so good yes and you equip it for three <laughs> mana so uh yeah and the uh with the flavor text of coming through excuse me i have the soup don't don't touch me. Come so, Meta suit. twenty fifteen was famous for the fact that they brought in uh, several faces from just sort of the gaming community at large to help design cards. And this was a card designed by a young man named James Ernest. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a who designed small... Kill Doctor Lucky, which is my favorite board game. Sure did. And so, at the bottom of the cards, uh, there were there was a small line of text that indicated who had designed it. And so, this card was just fun. If you look at the art, you can literally see the kind of the goblin coming through. But then you see the soldiers that are like terrified. They're like, "Oh, it's soup." <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's just delightful. I just love yeah. this card. Yeah, it was really cool. So it's hard to get around hot soup for talking about our favorite treats. Yeah. And MTG. So let's go in here to number one. Now, due to the powers of deduction and my only hire still being unnamed, somebody's got my number six. I wonder who it is. Ruben, what's your number one? Uh, my number one features a iconic pair of characters from Magic Past in a little bit of a... Uh, unique situation that you don't typically think that Squee and Gerard would be in. Uh, Squee apparently has made himself some soup uh, with a chef's hat and is serving it to Gerard and Gerard being served food by uh, Squee appears to not enjoy it. We started out my list with Squee Goblin Nabob. Now we've got Squee the deckhand serving his meal. Uh, we also had a piece from Kaja Foglio. We're ending my top 10 with a piece from Phil Foglio. My number one is Recycle. My number Four six. Four colorless green green enchantment. It's a rare from Tempest, which means it's on the reserve list. Uh, you skip your draw step. Whenever you play a card, you draw a card. And your maximum hand size is two. So you can just sort of go all the way through your deck, just combo off. It's a lot like um, Experimental Frenzy, as we see in Standard right now. Okay. They they uh, um, color shifted it in Planner Chaos to Null Profusion, which is a black card that does the same thing. Oh, wow. Uh, and the art is just hilarious um, and lovely. And the Foglios are, of course, per perfectly suited for the top 10 treats. Yeah, don't worry. Uh, it sucked in black, too. <laughs> um, <laughs> It was it was bad. This is a card that, that up. it's on the reserve list now. Now reserve list wasn't necessarily all of the rares. They would like pick and choose. It was really odd. Um, but this one definitely was on it. It's like two and a half bucks. Every once in a while, it'll go through that phase of like pump and dump because people yep. are just like they'll buy any reserve list card yeah. and then they'll just list them for a hundred dollars or whatever and see what happens. Um, because this is a card that is probably legitimately dangerous if you're ever able oh, to sure. make mana I, and then I've play been spells. Putting this in every green deck I've ever played in EDH. Nice. Well, there you go. Because again, this is, you power through your deck, it can get ridiculous. But, you know, and again, as a picture though, like Phil Foglio, the Foglios for me were so much of early magic. Like they really, really were. Yeah. They, they made a lot of what I loved about magic. Absolutely. Which was great. And it was, again, my number six, because that that, that picture was like, it's just, <laughs> it's, it's yeah, great. It's absurd. Aaron, what's your number one? Speaking of early magic, we're going to go back. We're going to go back to a card. Now, you know me. I'm a vintage girl. I'm a legacy girl. I like my old school, you know, and this card is old. And you and you know that it's old by the tw by the $1,200 price tag that it's currently going for. There is a functional reprint, and it's cute, but it's not this. And it's also not nearly as tasty. Uh, this is a card that I, I, it's funny, you know, for it being as old as it is and as expensive as it is, I can only think of one deck that might actually use it. Uh, sometimes the lands decks use it. If your if your $1,500 tabernacle doesn't do the job for you, uh, you can always bring in this card also. And my number one 
his drop of honey or drop of honey for those playing along at drop home. Of honey. Drop of <laughs> wow. honey. So my number one is drop of honey. Uh, it is one green from Arabian Nights as an enchantment. Uh, during your upkeep, the creature, <laughs> let's go with the original text, shall we? Uh, the creature in play with the lowest power is destroyed and cannot be regenerated. If there is a tie, <laughs> girl, um, you choose which to destroy. Drop of honey must be discarded discarded um if there are no creatures in play um there is a functional reprint in the form of porphyry nodes um which is yes. white from planar chaos which effectively does the same thing um but this original by ansonatix you know it's literally just sort of the bee making the honey you see this really neat kind of the background of the hive there like sort of the cone effect like that's mm -hmm. just beautiful the comb effect if you will um but this card is currently going for twelve hundred dollars it's never been reprinted it's just drop a honey um and it's just it's just it's, yeah. it's on the reserve list that's the problem yeah. 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 So it's I believe Porphyry Nodes is an anagram for, or Porphyry Node is an anagram for Drop of Honey. Nice. Really? Um, also, another one that was uh, color shifted, obviously. I didn't know that, Ruben. Well, you're welcome. I, I don't, like the Snapple cap of Magic Fact. <laughs> I don't think it's quite um, yeah. there, but it's very close because there's no, there's not two P's in Drop of well, there's Honey. There's no S. Right, it's there. close. No, but he said draw Porphyry Node. But regardless, right. the idea is it's that close. it's vaguely, no, it. yeah, it's vaguely playable sometimes in Enchantress because it's green. Yeah. That matters. Um, a lot of people choose the Porphyry Nodes just because it's a more budget friendly $5 yeah. option instead of $500 option. Uh, which is awkward. This is another one of those cards that just exploded overnight. Like one day they decided that $50 drop of honeys was not where we're going to be. And then it it's like blew up. Every, it's going to happen to every yeah. single one that has any playability. Like just, there's the smidge of playability is all it needs. And the, the white version also sees play in the Enchantress decks. It's just something you can kind of slam early on and you're fine with it happening because your plan isn't really to, you know, win with creatures. So um, just a great card and, and just drop a honey. Just, it's just so simple and innocent. Just a drop, just a drop. Well, yeah, just the tip. Um, <laughs> number one, number one, for me was when someone's like, okay, what's food magic? I was like, bing, I've got it. I, I, I was thinking, this is the card that comes to my mind when I think about food magic. Uh, it's a very old card, old school card, uh, even comes from sets we were talking about earlier. Uh, it definitely has food all over it. There's just food and there's a big mouth ready to chow down some food, which just so happens to be a unicorn head because that's weird because it's feast of the unicorn, which originally oh. came from homelands. And so there's a lot of feasts on our list. There's only one feast for me, and that's the feast of the unicorn. So uh, don't worry, it sucks. That's okay. But it, honestly, it wasn't as sucky as some of the other ones, really. Uh, it's a Homelands card. They had two versions of it. And uh, the first one just has these weird looking dudes, these goblin dudes with like a dagger. And the other one has a giant unicorn's head uh, with an apple in its mouth and stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's a black and three generic mana for a enchantment aura, enchant creature. And the enchanted creature gets plus four, plus zero. And let me tell you, back then, that was some good clean living. People had not yeah. seen you know pumps like that before, and like, oh my god, what's going to happen? Blah, blah, blah. Because they didn't know, you know, that creatures make magic fun, and you should make creatures fun and interesting. So they made the spells good. But this was neat, and again, this is what yeah. I think of as food and magic. There's food all over it, and Absolutely. they also are eating a unicorn head. You don't see that every day. Yeah, yeah right. I like that the, you mentioned sort of the two different arts. You also have the dueling flavor text. So on the version where you have the, the head on the platter, you have Autumn Willow saying, could there be a fowler act? No doubt the Baron knows of one. And then you have the other version where the goblins, it looks like they might kind of be in the middle of the act. Like I always imagine that they're actually kind of like holding the unicorn down and doing the thing. Um, and then he says, some delicacies are not to be savored, save by the callus. So Baron Sengir has his sort of take on it um, where, you know, only bad guys should be able to do this. And then you have Autumn Willow kind of musing about how terrible it is and so yeah. that was a neat kind of play on on the arts and the flavor text you know i really do think wizards could make it work if they wanted to go back to old growth up i honestly think they could make it i work. agree i think yeah. that the world of homelands is super interesting super in depth um and if they wanted to make it work they could yeah and ultimately it was the too problem is that it's so similar to dominaria already in many aspects yeah um but we yeah and they've also sort of given up on a lot of that old story arc stuff and but it, they definitely could they right definitely could. but at the end of the day you know a storyline created by two guys in customer service maybe best to leave it behind if they want to bring back baron Sengir, man they got an in i would yeah. be i would be okay with that just as a commander product or something like yeah. whatever who cares but that said, that wraps up our top 10 MTG treats. You will see them on the screen now for your review. Take a look at my list, Aaron's list, Ruben's top 10. And we want to hear from you about what card we did not talk about. And we'll select our favorite to win a $50 gift certificate to CoolStuffInc.com. But before we go, I want to thank my co-hosts. Thank you, Aaron. 
Thank you. And I just want to give a special shout out to a couple of the folks at Scryfall um, who we were able to, this was kind of yes. a niche category. And so we really needed some help trying to narrow down the possibilities and we're not being, you know, paid for this or anything shady like that, but um, they do have tags where you can literally look up food. You can look up like desserts. And so that really helped us choose these cards. And so if you are looking to participate in the honorable mentions, you may want to check that out and it'll help you too. Very nice. Thank you, Ruben. Hashtag not scry staff. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, this has been a real treat. Thank you for having me. Very nice. We on here to our final slide. So I want to thank our sponsor, CoolStuffInc.com, our co-sponsor, CardHoarder.com, my co-host, Aaron Campbell, Ruben Bresser, you guys for watching or listening, and I hope you support us at Patreon.com slash Magic Mics. Follow, like, tweet, favorite, share, subscribe, do everything social that tells people we exist. Catch us online at Twitch.tv at Magic Mics, on Twitter at Magic Mics Cast, our Magic Mics subreddit, and like the Magic Mics page on Facebook. Talk to us privately at Magic Mics Podcast at gmail.com. Follow the audio-only podcast at Magic Mike Podcast at Magic Mike's Podcast at Libsyn.com, or find us on iTunes, or join us here next week. Same time, same place for another episode of Magic Mics. Good night, everybody.